I'll start because I'm not going to finish. Um, does anybody have a problem if I'm no longer the chair and and uh, Chris is the chair? No. Nope. No, don't no problem there. No, sorry, Justin. Um, hey, how you guys doing? I guess um, I had the first one as the rec registration software, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll stick to it. But yeah, so the first thing for that is that was something we've kind of all been all been talking about um, as far as signups go. Um, you know, making reserving different facilities, communicating with parents, all that different kinds of stuff. So I was looking into um, some management software and two uh, seemed to pop up as like the most popular ones. Um, first one was Community Pass. The next one was Rec Pass. Um, community Pass seems uh, a, little, a little too expensive. Um, uh, is an annual fee is fifty three hundred bucks. The immediate, like the initial first year is eighty three, so that's you know, obviously steep. Um, the second one, rec desk, that one's at two nine five as an annual an annual cost. And what that's doing, um, yeah, so facility reservation scheduling, lead management scheduling, credit card processing online registration, program management, um, you know, we'll be able to do all the invoice billing, training whatever we want on it. Um, so just really kind of everything. I'm, I'm confused because the town already has player registration. They're not gonna want us to switch to a separate program. Why would we do that? Um, I mean, I guess because the one we have now isn't really working for a lot. Not one. That's all. That's just kind of feedback on here. I mean, if it's not working, it's not working. But they're gonna, they're gonna be the way to see our registration. Yeah. Because it's all. I don't know why it wouldn't be working. It's all processed through the So our rent registration. Shelly, what's what's been your experience when you're doing this? Um, so honestly, the first time that I've ever done the the registration was coming out of the the pandemic, and really, I think that the disconnect was where Mrs. H would always handle the registrations in person, and we were able to get flyers into the backpacks of the kids because we were having you know face to face and in in person learning. So I think coming out of the pandemic, I think every registration that I've been involved in, that being um, primarily the Suburban Football League, as well as um, the softball and, and baseball registration, I think just coming out of the pandemic, it's been, it's been a little bit clunky and, a, and an, um, a little bit labor intensive, just because it's been, you know, all, all over the place. Um, so I, I think Chris and I did talk a while back about getting some sort of of sports software to to to, to sort of um streamline it especially if we were regionalizing the sports um through throughout district 38 but i guess that was just uh, kind of preliminary discussions yeah and it's just something like you know speak to other rec directors in the area um that everybody I think just in regards to convenience is too, just how much more like people never need a hard copy of anything ever. You know, um, parents are going to be able like all that stuff is saved. Um, they can go and click like, okay, I want Jimmy and Sally to be on rookie baseball, and then you're going to go and click, and I want uh, you know Steve and Tim to be on major softball or whatever the hell it is. You know. And they can just go in, click on that, click the little box. I agree to all these different waivers, blah blah blah, whatever we have for documents, and then just boom. 
How much? I'm sorry, it's a little bit muffled on my end as far as volume is. $2,095? Uh, $2,906. Oh, I No, the something you say in our revenue pre pandemic was for registration. And I was kind of thinking, I wanted to talk to somebody about getting the budget up a little bit. I understand that, that hasn't gone up in a while, so it's like, hey, go up a little bit. Uh, just like standard budget. Oh, just town budget? Yeah. Uh, I've already gotten Bob Fido here. I'm going to be up his ass about it. We're recording. So just, just the whole idea of that software, I have to tell you, I, I love that idea. I get that the price point is probably way too high for a rec program like Wheatley, but what the, the software that Chris is talking about is the software that I use for my, I mean, registration for signing up my kids for any suburban league that they play in is, is so easy. It's like Chris is saying, you just click the waiver, you pay for everything right there. Um, and then I've never used this type of software on the other end where you're the admin part of it, but what from I, I hear, rosters are created, your phone numbers are all there, your email lists are all there. Like it's, de it, it definitely streamlines the process for anybody trying to organize behind the scenes. Um, however, that being said, with Waitley being so small, that price tag is a little, hef is a little high. Great. Chris can use his SI Play um, software and it works really well. So I, I get that <clears throat> the price tag is, and it doesn't, it's not scale in terms of number of registrations. I mean, I, I think it goes well beyond registration too. I think that's probably a thing. I think it's just also like the facility reservation thing. Like somebody wants, uh, like Curly Field, they, we got a coach game on Monday, so then like somebody else is trying to like, hey, it's available, like they can just go, they have the rec desk thing, they go right on there, they check the availability, um, they can see that for all facilities, we can do it for practice schedules, game schedules, for basketball, soccer fields, like just absolutely every playing surface, anybody who's part of this will have immediate access to I'm just thinking funding wise, is there anything else within the town where they would benefit from this? Like I know the reserve, the town hall for booking, Amy talking about. Is there any way you could pull from other departments within the town to say, hey, if you want in, this is great, 500 bucks a year, you're prepared, you know, most of her rec department uses it. Where else? Just to help soften the blow. You know, what else, what else is booked in town? Town, I know the dancer side also went up there, Amy was telling me. Town Hall America, yeah. Yeah, what else is uh, available or uh, library a little bit, but the <laughs> library might, might be, I don't know. If we had a service like this or some for a software set up, maybe it would make it down easier for people looking for apps to do it. You could look at your local schools and see what they should do. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. just thinking what else could you do to help help soften the blow? At the end of the day, everything is just expensive these days. It is. Yeah, everything is. Yeah, so what other thing are you saying? Like, like, could you up the, the membership thing five bucks for every day? Really? Yeah, so then no, like, no, a little bit, but I mean, yes. that's that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I would say there, there's probably a lot of different ways. I mean, if you guys, you know, really, 
I, 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 I think that having a software to manage it, I mean, I definitely think just from an economics perspective, it's going to increase, you know, like increasing production possibilities, you know, you're going to be able to build teams, uh, manage teams a lot better, um, probably have, you know, less people fall off, less mistakes made, things like that. So, I mean, I think that it's there. Um, you know, I think, you know, probably, um, it, it, I guess the issue right here is, is that, you know, how are we going to, like, how are we going to manage, you know, kind of setting a, some type of money aside that's going to actually pay for that, you know, and I think <clears throat> that's the only concern that I would have, really, I think, probably there's enough people in town that would like to have this, you know, um, and I know me personally, like, you know, I wouldn't mind paying, you know, five, 10 more bucks uh, registration. Um, but, you know, then again, like <clears throat> the pandemic and everything else has changed everything so dramatically that, you know, it's hard to know um, what registration it looks like at this point. So it's, um, you know, <clears throat> is it feasible? I mean, it's a great idea. It's a great idea, but like just the feasibility of it from a financial standpoint, um, you know, and, and just thinking about the budget that we went over um, before the pandemic, I mean, we, we were running, you know, pretty tight numbers. I mean, you know, we, we weren't, you know, raking in a bunch of dough, but there's different ways to pull the money in too from, you know, advertising and things like that. So, um, but yeah, I, I would say you would want like a direct correlation between sports registration and you know the cost of the software um because i can almost guarantee that people in the town are going to probably care about this cost you know quite a bit so um i don't know that's my two cents anyway Justin, you made an interesting That's, you know, people are spending, you know, use the hurley he just let the fence sign. They're either spending two, I think it's either two or two fifty a year, I think two a year on a sign, which is great, but a sign on the outdoor fence. They can get, and you'd have to find a lot of companies to really to and, and get the price out what the price point is for it and around the price. You'd have, to, you'd have to find out from the company what the traffic is going to be. And then you go to a company and you're going to get 20 different bits, but whatever that number is, and then price out what you're going to get for that. I just, I feel like the problem with that is that you can't really get How was um so for the uh, Waitley Rec baseball? How was how was that scheduling? Did you did you take care of a lot of that? Because I thought that the the games that were scheduled for my son's team were amazing. Like we played teams like Buckland that that we've never played before in the past. So did was that a lot of your doing, and was that all uh, pretty labor intensive for you? Um, so that was just reaching out to a lot of local local towns, Greenfield, Montague, um, Hill Towns, just trying to kind of get as many as many games as we could. Um, but as far as like actually organizing the schedule, that was Tim Ewan from Summerlin. That was who? I'm sorry. That was Tim Ewan from Summerlin. Gotcha. And he scheduled Buckley, Kelvin, and all those guys as well. He's just scheduled games. And then he did like uh, right, but he, he was going to get he's never done that before. He had, yeah, well, it was kind of, I don't know, sort of put him on the spot, like, okay, you know, that was the end. That's the end. That's the end. You can't just work with them, right? Because, like, these people want to play against us, so um, you don't have to do 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would say like the <clears throat> what I think we're kind of talking about here is is mostly registration. So like, so basically, like you know, on registration, you know, Mrs. H, she goes out to the school. People come, they register. And then, you know, that's when the rosters are built. But actually, that that part of it is actually pretty labor intensive, getting all the money together, doing all the registrations, you know, contacting all the coaches. So that part of it with this software would be taken away. But, you know, it's, um, you know, because obviously we'd have a more streamlined process. But the, uh, the, you know, like as far as scheduling sports, like that goes to, um, you know, like he said, Jim Ewan, and then there's, there's another lady out of uh, Deerfield, and I don't know what her name is escaping me now, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, so there's two parts to it, but that registration piece is very labor intensive, um, you know, just, I mean, you have to actually sit down and, and, you know, deal with, you know, what do we have, what do the numbers look like, and those are things we bring back to the committee, um, you know, and we plan for and things like that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I would say that it, it is a, you know, it can be a pretty heavy piece, but um, I mean, I don't know, was that your experience, Chris, or? Like I, at that point, I hadn't really, like I hadn't stepped into the leadership role really at any time. So I was just kind of trying to help guys get in touch with as many different other league people um, as we could, but yeah, I, Joey. Yeah, it, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. A lot of, I mean, so John would get the online payments through the Waitley website and he would forward those to me. And then I was able to keep a spreadsheet of, of the roster. Um, and then also a lot of people um, brought the hard copies and put them in the mailbox at the town hall. So I was able to get those from Lynn. And then she just essentially wanted like an accounting sheet of, of payments and who paid and, you know, referencing the, the, the check or whatnot. Um, that aspect of it, I can tell you just the registration for Waitley Elementary alone wouldn't justify that type of software. We just, I mean, we just don't have enough kids. Um, but I do think that it's a great idea. And I think if going forward, we are talking about regionalizing all the sports because our lack of numbers, I think that that software um, is a great idea down the line. I just don't think that we're ready for it yet and can necessarily justify that price tag yet. I, I will say though, and, and I, I mean, I, I agree with you, I'm not sure we're ready to get to regionalization. saying that but I but I know that the, the time that it takes me to schedule adult baseball I mean it's not hours and hours and hours but it's not nothing either and making that process easier for them because we need that adult baseball like it or not is you know Wednesday Thursday Wednesday, Thursday night, and Saturday morning, that provides an awful lot more for what we do. You know, a, a, a few thousand dollars of revenue. Having them be able to have the link to say, okay, I'm going to do this, that, this, you know, whatever it is, maybe through the box, rather than calling me, like I got a call today saying, hey, is Hurley available on Saturday? I don't know, because because not everyone because we're not disciplined enough in terms of some some people will call Chris, some people will call you know whatever. Um, having that would make it easier, and I think we do need to make sure that they stay with us. If they're in another field, or, uh, and I'm not sure whether it would or not. I mean, I can see the benefits and why they did just the, you know, if that's a few thousand dollars and we're doing sixteen hundred dollars in in uh, registration fees. I don't see that going up until probably about ten, or at least be flat. You know, it's 
Banner advertising would make it very possible. So like I just like okay mentally like we need five hundred bucks out of you guys and we're gonna keep this deal going and then like the you know the town hall like hey what can you guys offer us and then you know, up the up the fees and then you go in talk to Blue Lake Trucking like hey we want five hundred bucks and you know, kind of stack stack it up kind of thing and then go and talk to the finance committee and, and I I just. I think it's an opportunity to just absolutely smoke Rex Sports in this area. And I, I don't know, I just don't really see that cost. I think we would have to do it for the purpose of getting the money out of it. But I mean, they, they're going to want some of it. They're not doing it just to do it. But like, even like, hey, you guys do it, then we'll make like just the way trucking is what you people. Just like whatever you can get to get people to is there um is there a way to oh sorry cut in there um I was gonna say is there a way to do like a trial run with this or try it out um I mean I don't know. I mean, I would certainly, I'll tell you uh, from my standpoint, I would certainly be willing to donate some money to try it out. Um, but you know, I don't, I just don't know, you know, I think like if you didn't have like a, an, an obligation on it, but you had something set aside for it and you let people take a, a look at, um, how it could possibly help us. Um, I think people would get a better idea and a be and better understanding as far as what we're trying to do there. But, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I would certainly be willing to donate some money, like in the order of like $500 to, uh, I don't know if anybody else wants to fork up any cash on it, but I'll put Even some. Even business is good. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, like, if there's any way I can help out with this, I'm just, I'm game, you know, so I, you know, I'll put something in there on it, but, um, yeah, I, I just want to be helpful here. There is money. We have money in our revolving account. Um, but we're also looking for some bills. We're trying to maybe put some skin on the trying to put down in that maybe we're not going to have quite as much money. Four to six thousand dollars from our guests. Um, so we could put some down and all that kind of stuff. That, that's going to take out half of that money that we don't want to lose. When I, when I took over Rex, Several years ago, I was doing it for free because they were in deficit. Um, there was just no no cash management at all. We didn't want to be careful of that. But I think that we should, A, I think we should ask them if they would do the I think we'll ask if they're looking for some money. Something like that. Because I, I, 
I do see the benefit for some state. We may reach state level that way. That money is so important. Is there, Chris, do you know if there is any way to pilot it? To Justin's point, is there like a trial run or a way to pilot it? It's a 30 day demo. Okay. Um, and then I guess one last point I want to make is that I feel like the easier and more organized and more efficient the rec program is, the more volunteers you're going to get. I think like a lot of people are, are turned off by, like, I, again, registration wasn't horribly laborious, but it, it, it did take some time. It was a time commitment. Um, and I think some parents do feel a little bit frustrated and think that the rec sports have been a, a little disorganized in the past. Um, so, so I think to, to Chris's point, the more organized and streamlined, we're going to get more volunteers and we're going to get more kids. Okay. I mean, Chris, your call, obviously. I would see it. But someone's going to have to manage this thing, too. Yeah. Well, and that, that's like I would want to step in and I know personally, but I, I think it's a disaster when parents go to the and say, we need to do this on or 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 the next year when they do it. And depending on some of the um, but they have to keep the sign up, but we also At points, you guys are coming in uh, a little bit broken there. Yeah, the audio the audio is pretty bad. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, are you going to see what you're going to do for the cost based on? Yeah, and then I was gonna I was also going to talk with Brian about talking with the finance committee about our cost and then Kara was saying like maybe we could just get like a I don't know. That, I was just going to kind of like keep, keep poking around and seeing what we could do. Yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about lowering the costs with them. I'll talk to them about um, advertisement on the, on the site. And uh, but yeah, I just, I feel like if this, like if this were to, if we were to get it in half and we took fifteen hundred dollars out of our budget, is that like a realistic thing? We have a win because we don't get finance to give us more money than we do what we have to do. But if we could reduce it and get some advertising, we can bring it down to a number. I want to think that if they can. Tell you who in the area uses their software, and you reach out to them. Say, hey, did this work? Help me. Did it work for you guys? Did it work for money? How did you help recruit the cost? All this. But maybe there's other things we're not even thinking about. Maybe it can help offset it. Yeah, well, that's that's like that guy down in uh, South Valley. I don't know if like the other 25% or something else or the other nothing. I don't think any of these guys are going to be that. Like Deerfield, Conway, right, et cetera. Right. Like, my guess is they don't. But it's going to be the larger ones that are going to be like 29 to 50. 
has anybody asked, and I'm sorry if I interrupted because I again I can't um it's I can't really hear very well. Um, but when I was picking up registrations from Lynn Sibley and we were just chatting about the whole online payment option, she said that a guy in the office, and I believe it's Brian, um he does a program in Southampton. He's he's part of the either the rec program in Southampton. But she was saying that that he could also provide some insight in regards to the the software that they use. So I don't know if anybody's friendly with him and just want to run it run it by him. He's the town administrator. He lives in Southampton, so he'd be happy to have a conversation. Yeah, I don't know how many different software programs you looked at, Chris. But dad is like you know south and south and i don't know what their population is but you know, regional but i imagine they're you know, relatively small like they have recommended mm -hmm. so, whether it's rec desk or not it's you know it's a tool that that they're using and like you know this kind of like all these convenient algorithms and stuff like at no point in my career am i ever going to be able to make this kind of web page um but just when you have this kind of stuff you can organize Yeah, I, I think there's still a lot more stuff we gotta, I gotta kind of put ways to work on. Yeah. Um, number two, we had Wayne wanted to talk about recent and future purchases. Um, and I kind of just left that open if anybody had any other ideas. But the first one was a uh, sprinkler gun. He said that he thought there was some money somewhere for that at some point. Um, and he was like talking to Carlo. I don't know. Yeah. Um, talking with him about like different hookups to each field, like coming out of town water supply or something. So I that was something I kind of wanted Wayne will have to sort of talk more about. But does anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, we, we've talked about irrigating the fields in the past. Um, and what caught us was last year when, when the softball field was going in and the drought hit, it killed the outfield. I mean, literally killed the outfield. It was new grass. Uh, you know, you don't, you, you get that. Yeah. Um, and there was no irrigation. Um, they talked about running a two inch line from River Road down past the 90 foot diamond on the third base line and then to the outfield fence in the softball field so that they could irrigate both fields a little bit. You know, 90 foot diamond is a pretty big field to irrigate, but you can do the softball field potentially. He would have more information, but I know what he's talking about it, and he talked about a lot about it in the past. He just wants to find the money. Um, the budget. This year, what do I mean? I could be at ten thousand dollars that they the finance committee gave us. Um, a lot of that has historically gone to uh, maintenance of the fields in terms of fertilizing and stuff like that, um, but also custodial stuff for for the for the bathrooms and, and the kitchen. Um, you might be able to find a thousand dollars there to do irrigation along that line. I don't know where they would get the, the, the water department to do it. I don't know, but it needs to be done because the assets that will get, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll burn up. I mean, that softball field is so crazy. Now? Yeah, the outfield is like a big growth spot. I walked down there a couple of weeks ago, like weeds all along backstop and then like the fence in front of the benches part of the bench <laughs> and slab was off um, what that's brand new yeah I was brand new. so that was i haven't been down there lately so that's why we're having a meeting with modesto to uh, be like because we need to redo this contract to be like whoever I'm whoever is that, saying yeah. they need to do it like Who's the best? Superintendent. Uh, Gary's the best. Okay. 
Um, that's a partnership agreement with the field maintenance. So it was an agreement that, again, they, they cut the grass, yeah. but it was an agreement that was put in place a while ago um, for to help defray the costs of, of, of keeping the thermal field law. Um, and it wasn't paid, they didn't ask for payment during COVID. Um, and then not then they have a new business this year and so she's unsure as to what she should and should not pay. And the agreement has expired. So we have to have that conversation. Um, but the money would obviously, you know, it would go towards these kinds of things, but it's also gonna help us with dirt on the invoice, you know, things like that. So it's whatever we would decide as a priority for early, but I don't see demand of you coming back, especially with the softball team. You're not talking, the outfield grass is one thing, right? No? Well, the, 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 the shallow left. Yeah, it really is. It, it, it. We've spent so much time and effort and money on that site, which tells me that there's not enough soil. To keep the grass growing. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that would be my first guess. Okay, what do you think? Who's who's in charge of fertilizing right now? So that's the, are they still handling No, them? fertilizing would be us and champion lawn care has already been done. Not New England Greenscape. Not New England Greenscape. New England Greenscape just forms out the champion. Because oh. they don't have the they they and I've known Steve for okay, a long time. And he finally one time said, just put champion graphics in after you call me. I'm just gonna call champion. Um but they're supposed to be doing it. Yeah. But this well, doesn't sound like yeah, I'll talk to Wayne about it. We'll go down and look at it. You know the guy from champion at all? No, I don't know that. But it sounds like it's like that it's well needed. Um, and granted, the grass can't make it this year. You know, it's not going to stand a chance next time. Right. Well, 13 inches of rain in July, unless it, it literally has root rot. Right. Which those soils are so well drained, it doesn't have root rot. It's never going to make it. It's never going to take it. Wayne Slicey, we sliced the walnut in last fall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was last August, September, we sliced, sliced and the we were, And we were watering it. Yeah, yeah, we put that little gun in the river. And, yep. The pump down the river. Yep. Wayne was originally talking. Uh, there's already water risers at all the fields on teeing it in there, running underground irrigation, and getting away from the gun. He thought to me in our talks that the gun was gonna near the cost of running complete full irrigation. You already have water there. Now you're just pulling laterals and cutting pads, which everything is much more involved when he makes everything sound easy. Right. But everything yeah. is much more involved. But if you do the gun route, you know, who's going to maintain the gun? Who's going to set up the gun? Yeah, there's a lot more that goes with it. You got to go down there and you got to be down there. You got to put fuel on it. There's a lot that goes with the gun. If, if you put it in the ground, though, how do you prevent some people from catching it? Clean. They're in every ball field. I'm not sure what they do. If, if sports irrigation had different covers on the head, maybe. I'm not sure what. I don't know. Is, 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 is uh, Frontier irrigated? I'm not sure. Sports uh, irrigation. I haven't done sports yeah. irrigation much, but I don't know if they have certain style heads on the so top of heads. That, yeah, right. might. The guy. Yeah. I'm not sure they have it. They we don't want some kid ripping up his knee or knee because. Yeah. If they have them out in the football field, go back and see it. I know at least some part of Yeah, I'll talk to Wayne about it. Okay, so I'll take her right now. And the benches are falling apart? Because those benches were moved from the old stock <laughs> market. That's why they are in this And I'm getting the sense that that's not the case. But I guess, like, a, if, so like if you do have this, uh, 
like uh, this irrigation project? Like, do you create like a like do you create a special thing, or is this like okay, this has to go? Well, you could always ask for a capital expenditure next year's budget. And, but capital expenditure would require more than five thousand dollars. Otherwise, it, it, it comes out of supposed to come out of somebody's general office. Um, but I got to tell you, people are going to be like, "You spent all this money," and we actually didn't spend that much money. So we got a softball field for sixty-five thousand dollars, which is really good. But we're not going to come up with that. So, right. so it's like let's spend ten thousand dollars. What you'd want to do probably is irrigate all the major fields and the soccer field. The soccer field isn't done too. They got crap in that for the most part. And it's also, it, it's like it, the, the, the climb is steeper than most people think. I bet there's a foot difference. Because field maintenance is so expensive, what other way are they generating revenue? Through early, through early, by you know, by the use of the field, the pavilion, could this, could this whole rent desk program allow people to book? Could you rent out the pavilion? Absolutely. For part of that, I'll go through rec desk and that get more traffic that way. I'm trying to think. Everything just costs so much these days that you, you can go ahead. But you can easily save a thousand dollars a home on a year in fertilizer and spray. Right. Why not? Let alone. I'm not sure how many acres are down early, 15 acres down there, 20 acres down, you know. It's probably, you know, probably a 12, 15 acre site. You know, Maybe more. more. You spend a lot of cash. So you got it's a fine line with how much are you going to generate from it? How good is it going to look for what you put into it? Some years are going to be better than others, growing conditions. So kind of got to get in the same playing field. So in my mind, you got to be in the same playing field what the expectations are. And and but to, to do like renting out the pavilion, renting out whatever, that's someone's time to clean up and check high. Well, clean up you could get the custodian to come in and you could charge the whoever is renting it, you could just charge an extra visit from the custodian. Because if somebody uses it on a Saturday, you don't want the because the custodian only comes two days and Fridays, so you don't necessarily want if it's a big party. You don't want that stuff sitting around. Yeah. Um, you want to make sure the bathrooms are clean and, and nothing happened there. But to, to manage the, the make sure that, you know, whoever, whoever rent, rents it needs the keys, all this kind of stuff. The more people that rent it, the more people that know about the bathroom codes. So then at one point we changed from keys to codes because we're probably 40 key rent. It helped. And people leave the bathroom doors open, which invites animals or, 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 or kids who have been drinking. They all use the river, and then they don't bathrooms pray. And people get sick in the bathrooms, and then so you know, it's just. And I'm, I don't want to be a downer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm trying to think what else. I'm trying to loop all this rec desk in together and figure out how I can help justify all this. Tell you in the in the next. Couple years, there's gonna be some significant purchases made. So when you talk to the town, or you talk to the finance committee, or, or, or people looking at donating, you help justify the reasons or what direction you're hopefully, you know, where what direction your idea is heading towards. Well, yeah, I mean, what, what the plan is for the quality of the field, the benches, and you know, that's the facilities. Where, it, you know, it's not. I'm not knocking saying it's not a beautiful place, but we have, you know. Put a plan in place for the parking lot, and then you can kind of help justify all these high dollar items, ten thousand dollar, fifteen thousand dollar line items, and say, "Well, we're going to do this instead of looking for X amount of money because we're going down this avenue." So the parking lot will be done in the next. I don't know whether we'll get the grant that we applied for, yeah. but regardless, the parking lot has to be done because we're out of compliance. That's not a rec problem. No, that's a town problem. But my point is that the, 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 the parking lot and probably a ramp to the bathrooms have to be done. 
because we're just going to get sued. And you don't want to do it just because you want to get sued. You want to do it the right thing to do. But, um, but my point is, if, you're, if we're going to be doing the parking lot and, and ramps to the, you know, to Jake's point, you need to do the wall or at least have a plan for what, what's going to happen iteratively year one, year two. Year yeah, we have a, a five year plan to, you know, different phases of where, where we're all trying to bring her looking to. Right. And because realistically, in this area, there's some nice parks up in Turner's Way, and well, there's not really anything really comparable to her only. No, there's there's really not. Yeah. Watch the name of the park. We go to the splash pad there on uh, Avenue A there, right off of along the Panky River, First Street. Other, yeah, than, yeah. other than that, where their ball field is, what else in the skate park, park? What else is really comparable? Yeah. So, Jake. Jake, to your point, my, my son just played in, so we scrambled the 10 U um, summer ball league really scrambled for any kind of, of tournament to play in for summer ball. Um, so the one that we were able to land was the Jimmy fun tournament in Agawam. And, you know, I don't know if that's something that maybe we could think about um, Hurley as hosting like some kind of summer ball tournament. With registration fees and maybe we could set up a food truck or a snack shack um but but i i know that a lot of the programs trying to get back into the swing of things had a real tough time trying to hone in on on tournaments we could play in so maybe we could host something like that yeah it could be Which it's, it's possible, it's not ideal. You know, I know the Jimmy, the Jimmy Fun tournament um, that you're talking about used to be in East Hampton. They still may do one in East Hampton as well. And that field has, that park has huge diamonds right there. Um, right, like a lot of technique swing pools. So, I mean, I, 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 we would have to share, we would have to go back and forth between Turner and East Hampton, which isn't awful. Together, the fire department, fire station field. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go ahead, Kelly. No, I was just laughing. Sorry. I was just going to say, like, you probably want to, instead of like getting like the local bums to come and play us in our tournament, it's like, let's go play somewhere where they can do what they do it in their tournament. Yeah. And, and again, not to be, it all takes volunteers. Running the tournament takes, and that's why we never take it here because I knew I couldn't really volunteers. Parents would say, I want to watch my kid. It's like, yeah. And then after the game is over, before their game starts, and you help them out because I've got it. I'm back at the house and I'm not going to get there until I say, well, whatever, it's fine. You know, it's just, um, and again, I don't want this to be a, a reason not to do it. I So I guess just to kind of sum up that sprinkler thing, so would that be like who is like the first person you want to get in touch with to kind of start asking the questions to kind of help you answer the question? Wayne and Jake and Bryce are pretty good. Yeah. We can pull our budget. If we can figure out how to make it happen. Within our budget, either general ops or involvement, that's up to us. We just don't know for sure. It is we talk to the board and know that this is the plan for that, that won't make us look good for finances. Or yes. no, I'm sorry. What if your program is like irrigation and say a three year plan to irrigate a four year with the soccer field in 2022 or whatever? Diamond, or you do one and, and try to almost prove yourself as you go. How much more expensive that could be? I'm sure it'd be the additional cost. I don't want to say how much, yeah, but you depend on where Wayne already has the water drain. I don't know where the water is. Is water in every diamond? No. Well, there's water in the Chet Storm Diamond on the regular side. Okay. Because it's a stand up. Yeah. 
there's water on the left field line at softball. And, and that pipe runs from the middle. Okay. I don't think there's water in there. There's electricity in diamond also. There's electricity at the small diamond. There's electricity for all the poles. There's not a lot. I can't imagine what this is. I don't think there is. Now, there, we may have developed this in the softball game. I'm not able to make the point. Okay. I'll talk to Wayne about it and I'll, I'll let him know what. But that, that's my idea is kind of not to hit him with one big call the $20,000 irrigation bill. Do it with, you know, $5,000 chunks over the next three or four years to get the place entirely irrigated. Just the other way to look at it. Letter will be sent, email will be sent back to the department head saying, hey, capital requests are too high. And there's some that we know already exist. There's deferred or they're more efficient. Um, that's the other thing you can do. Okay, you can increase $2,000 to make five years deferred too. So there's some things like that. But I would make the request all at once and you decide how you want to apply that request. You know, you're, yeah. you're far more experienced than us. Um, but I think that something has to be done to that. You have to show me. Because uh, they don't want to. It's good enough to sit back. Yeah, you can winterize it. Yeah, and, and we have to come in to winterize the pavilion already. Um, Jankowski Plumbing does that out of the big city. Whether he would win rise more than the pavilion for that in time of competition. But but he's a good guy and he really cares about the most important thing all the time. So he might in the future, but but that's all it is, just but here's the plan. Yeah. What about like uh, so when I bumped into him with that, so Talking about DA, like he wants to figure it out so like DA is involved in like the winterizing process and, and everything. He wants DA to have a more, more formal presence. So with frontier stuff, but like DA doesn't necessarily owe Waitley anything because it's a different town, but Deerfield Academy does owe Frontier something. And then Frontier would be doing our fields. So it'd be like DA would actually be taking care of our fields. But then you probably don't get the three grants. Right? You would, but you wouldn't need it. So, yeah, so that's kind of a little quick. Right. And I'd be careful that, you know, DA is going to say we don't owe Frontier anything. It's, yeah. a, it's a nice partnership. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't say that. Well, you, you, you kind of just did. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but TA is very cautious about what the seniors are doing because they don't want 20 requests on an annual basis. Um, so that would be done quietly as opposed to, yeah. I, I just don't know what, what they're going to be willing to do. Again, I'll use the, 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 the new skin on the 90 foot down as an example. I know I don't know anyone who really knows how to do that other than Brett Galante. Do you? Right, right. And, I, and I'm not being, I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm just, do you? Jason, I've never done it. Justin and Michelle, I mean, 
So you, you rely on the people you know, and if they don't want to help because they just feel like we're stretching too thin, we, we got to have them. So you're kind of right. I just don't know. Well, that's kind of that's something we'll sort of we'll figure it, and we'll have that figured out like before we need to go to directors. So that's kind of I'm sorry, what was the question again, and what is the correlation with DA? Again, the, the audio. I'm sorry. Horrible question, Shelly. Uh, I was asking if you know anyone who knows how to skin a, a baseball diamond. <laughs> Never mind. <Yeah. laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, that diamond spoke when we originally talked. We thought seeing that diamond this fall could potentially happen. Because if you know, the bigger boundary, have you been on that bigger boundary? Yeah. It's like a gas pit. So it's really bad. And again, if Bill was talking about that specifically, like that needs to get fixed, and like DA needs to fix it. Right. And, and I would caution areas. Use those kind of chairman esque oh, yeah. marching to Atlanta kind of comments because you know they're, they're so in so many ways. So I, I, I just think it's if you want to do it, yeah. but we have to be we have to be so, and they are, and, and we should all be very grateful because they, they really have. Um, all right. So, but that, but we actually do need to fix it in terms of purchases. That 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 makes sense. You should go down this fall. The opportunity is there. It'll stop being used sometime in the middle of August. And the money that's in the revolving accounts is going to be But again, that needs to. And, I, and I'm sure that, that if we asked, Brett would find out what he's purchasing already for DA from get some answers. And we just add to the purchase. We could also ask Steve Morse. You know, you mentioned Greenscape, so I thought. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I can call Steve and ask, and ask him to come. Um, I need a reminder of that. But that, that should happen. Um, I We're in good shape there, um, but that'll. I think the scale cost is about. Oh, we to apply the scale. That's the thing. That DA apply the scale. We would have to ask them, and they would either say. Yes, What's it right. take to the scale? I guess I've never been around it. Is there a hand apply? There's a, there are machines. Machine that does it. So that it's really. I mean, there are machines with grading eyes, and it's done to like. Millimeters, because we want a little bit of a slope so that water runs off instead of running off. But there, there are machines that do it really well, but it would not be knitted by hand. And you have it's something that's graded, graded. Yeah, and that would be six thousand. You think that? Yeah, that's just us. That's just the money. And does it six thousand cost the material again? Material, the material, not including. A lot of it's something like 90 yards of mix, or 
is that, I don't know my yard, 90 yards old, almost big flowers, if not that much. Yeah, 90 yards is, yeah, big trailer at all. What is that? Yeah, you know, that, it's probably 90, 90 to 100 yards. That's what I was told. And the other, the, actually, and the person who knows, I don't know how much he knows about it, but he knows something about it, is Bill. Is it? Well, and he said he wants his guys to have train. He said, actually, I, I was talking to him today about this. He said that his guys don't have the training for that stuff so that they can be effective. Which is fair. And that's why if we could ask. How long does this take? The, the 90 foot diameter heli is not going to rescan you in probably 20 years, which is why it's so bad. So if you stayed up on it, the cost would be significantly less. Or no, you I, I think you take out material and bring it in. I think. And again, I don't, you know. I'll just sort of, I'll Google it. Yeah. About it. I, I, but I think. I don't think you just lay on top. You have to take some out because otherwise you're just piling up on it. The same thing's happening at Frontier next year. Oh, they are. Yeah, that's our already scheduled. From New Hampshire. <laughs> well, then it's from New Hampshire. It's, it's some guy who I guess they have a big. I don't. I don't want to call it place. But some sort of batch plant where they can, yeah, where they can mix it. And there are different percentages of mix, depending upon how much moisture it's going to get. Because the mix that they put in is kind of messy. Conway Blue Diamond, it wasn't the right mix for getting more sun, and being really low, and getting horrible drainage. And now, I coach, I've coached a lot of games with that. And uh, once you learn to use the slide, you get to use it in the park. So, um, all right, well, hey, but Chris, seriously, if you guys are already getting it, you might want to add to that for people too. But through what that is, right? That's it. Well, but if Darius is already having, or Bill or whoever is having those questions, And we'll go down there looking at each other going, all right, what do we do now? <laughs> Luckily, I am pretty close to the bench, so we had a chance at some point. We're like, all right, this one. <laughs> um, because he now goes through their pieces and sort of looks at it. He's a really nice guy. The hierarchical is a big, big place. So, all right, well, we can move down. Um, is there some questions out there? So, next thing was the scoreboard. Um, so, I sent people pictures of visuals. So, if like you look in our look in your email, you can see all the all the pictures. Um, I'll have quotes for three of them. One of them I have a price and that was three grand. How big is that? The one that was 3,000 was eight feet by four feet by eight inches. Eight, that was eight, eight inches, right? Yep, yep. So, so eight, eight by four. Eight by four is two eight, what? is two eight nine five. This table is six feet probably. Yeah, that is table six feet. How big is your whiteboard? Probably four by eight. Oh, I don't know if this table six feet long. No, that's all right. This is a two by uh, yeah, that's probably a four by eight sheet of plywood. Um, well, a sheet of plywood, isn't it? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, no, equivalent wise, size wise, yeah, yeah. if you were to grab a 
of sheet of black, like probably four by eight, a little bit, maybe. I don't, maybe four by seven. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking if I if I lay down at almost six feet. Oh, mm -hmm. no. But basically, I mean, basically, around, that's the size. around that big. Which isn't a bad size. Nope. And then the How that was it? legs are now. That was three grand. With no legs. Uh, probably not. Um, then this one, there's one for Nevco that I like. Could you see that from, if that was for the, just a little diamond and you put that by the stands on the first base side, you could see that from anywhere on the field. I mean, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Here's another one that's 10 by four. Um, I actually like the look of that one a little more, but again, they're they're all there. So eight by four, ten by four. Um, another one was fourteen by five. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll have those prices um, soon, and then we can just kind of we can just kind of pick one. But I would say out of these four, I'd say either get one and plan on spending. Know, under four thousand dollars, definitely. I personally would rather build a build one and buy the software to make it one's life easier than to have a four thousand dollar scoreboard. Yeah, what do they? Yeah. What's the scoreboard do with that? What do they? What makes it so expensive? Besides lumber being not lumber, clay. What else though? What what what's what's in them? It's it, and there's no electronics, right? Yeah, there are. It's fully. Oh yeah, no, it's digitized. It's fully becomes fully digitized. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to add anything. Wireless, wireless, and there's a you know you get a a controller control over everything. Yeah. It's all okay. Yeah, so that's that's why. Do we have special money for that somewhere? Uh, get the count. I don't know. There's three, but it's pretty darn close right now. There's power yeah. out to where it's going. Existing yeah. power. We build a giant. You can be, well. There's power to. You might have to drink a trench. To run, to run wires to that spot because there's no there's no electricity to that where I was just talking about. Along you're along the right field line. I'm going along, along the right field line. My visual, but you could also just put it up right be, right behind the. Now you don't want to put it back by the backstop because the baseball is going to take it out. Yeah, I feel like because everybody seems to stand for the most part on their baseline. Unless you're using well, no, it's it, it it's divided by team. Okay. I mean the, the third base third base dugout gets those fans and the what parents and whatever and the first base dugout gets those. Yeah. Those Wayne was saying because I guess like in the middle would be perfect, but Wayne was saying the sun does something like the, the sun, sun sets into it. The sun sets in the third baseman's eyes. Yeah. And it's bad. I mean, you can't. The dirty little secret is. Steal third base right around seven thirty to quarter eight, because <laughs> <laughs> you're not catching the ball. Uh, so you want it? You want a right field line? You probably want a right field line. Yeah. Just make sure everybody can see. It. And I know this sounds crazy. Again, small diamond. The center field fence is two hundred feet. Two hundred feet. Could you see it from the first base line? Out in the center field. Yeah. Yeah. Why not put it there? You don't get the sun. Wait, where are you so you're saying out in dead center facing the ball field? I'm right, I'm saying home plates here, center field here. I, I don't know. I'm just that was the only yeah. thing. Right, that's where that's where I would envision that. I mean, being straight out there, it's um it seems like that would be, I don't know, it seems just easy enough to see and everything else. I mean, I can see those banners really easily from the, you know, first baseline, the bleachers and all that. So you should be able to see the full sign. Drive by and be able to see it too. Yeah, there was just, Wayne was talking about sunlight and I didn't want to, you know. I don't want to run away. I mean, again, that sun is brutal, 7.30. You know, depending upon the time of the time of spring. 
But I, I don't think you would have a problem. I mean, it's right by the flagpole, essentially, Justin. If it's that bad, they make any sort of uh, wood covering or something to create a shadow, a seat down, something like that, in case it was. That's way beyond my pay grade. But, you know, I mean, I mean, my thought was, geez, you could make a little bit bigger one. And when there's a baseball field on the small diamond, you could have it directly there, and then you could put it on a pivot. But there's no way you'd see it in the softball field. But maybe the 90 foot die. I'm just yeah, asking about the gyro. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's big enough for, for that. Um, because the ideal would be wonderful to put a scoreboard at every field. Yeah, I mean, definitely something. To, you know, that's, but that's a, that's a ten thousand dollar bill. And the controllers are wireless from the home plate area to the scoreboards. They have a range on them. There must be. I don't know what it is. That's a great question. I'm sure they come at different price points and probably different features. But last one, we put a scoreboard up and have it be fifty feet out of range. You go walk out down the right field line. Right. So to ask, to ask, like, yeah, to ask, ask some parent to sit yeah. next to the. Yeah. And like, does somebody come put it up for us? Or are we responsible for doing that? Do you think? Well, Wayne said it would be, and I don't want to pick on Wayne, but oh, uh, yeah, just to throw a couple of holes and put piping down. And I've been a lot of those jobs, Wayne. There's always more to them. Get them done or what? <laughs> it always gets done, but right. usually more than a couple hours. So, you know, we'll it, we're going to have to. We got to price out the the purchase and then the installation. You know, nothing's cheap. To your point. See what the manufacturer like recommends for footings or right pad now or, or however, because you might have a thousand dollars in installation costs. Top of a three thousand dollar scoreboard. I know which brand you go with, or if it's just on the poles. And it's expensive. Yeah. Those poles maybe need to go down six to ten feet. Again, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But well, there will be there'll be good info. But I, I do know that the person who, who who made the donation is eager to see something happen with that money because it's been a little while now. So it's good to have this get to get this movement. And they donated specifically for the scoreboard. They donated specifically for youth sports. Okay. And they like the idea of the scoreboard, or that the the, the widow likes the idea of the scoreboard. Yep. Okay. So. What else? Um, We're running out. Of it. Yeah. Um, equipment section in the Hurley shed. Um, I guess they're going to be taking away from the equipment shed space when they do the put in the handicap bathroom. They're just expanding it. They're, they're not putting in a new bathroom. Okay, or expanding it then whatever, but it was like cutting out like eight feet or something like that. Oh really? Yeah, it's cutting something out. So what Wayne was saying he wanted to get something in that barn where like the Toro is, that three-wheeler. Christine, yeah. He wanted to create like a, a space in there and then we could, it's a bigger area in there, and then you could do it like per sport, um, so that kind of stuff. The, the, what you're gonna run into is that there's no security in the barn and when people can't get into it, and yeah, it's absolutely the high school, they, Break the doors and stuff, and and so because there's there needs to be more communication about how they're going to get in, and they're given a key and then the place isn't locked up afterwards because everyone's just out and no one has the responsibility. And, um, but that's fine. I didn't realize that we we're going to lose some of the the storage in that shed, but that's that's fine, I guess. Okay, um, and then. Last, yeah, last thing, um, soccer. So that's coming up, um, I guess, in regards to the timeliness. I just heard from Jim Ewan, um, and I think he's talking about kind of getting, um, like, organizing the soccer league or whatever. Um, 
so yeah, we got to get info out to, to families and, and all that good stuff. We got to, well, I assume we're going to do the traditional for soccer, at least, unless we can get this software thing yeah. wrapped up soon. So I would say, in, what do you what do you think? Like two weeks maybe would be the deadline where it's like, okay, this is not going to be realistic for this season, and then push forward to deal. But like, do we have two weeks? Do we have till the middle of August? We have till the middle of August. Okay. People will start to ask. People who are already asking, I would honestly say, let's just do traditional registrations for soccer. And if we can get a, a flyer out ASAP, that would be that would be good. I, I honestly don't think it's realistic to, to think that the the software will be up and running for, for soccer. I just have a flyer right now. So Shelly, what I can, or everybody, what I can do is I can, Recraft the flyer that we've already always used, and I'll send that to Mary, I guess, and Mary can get it out to the elementary school kids. The challenge we've always had is that our waitlist kids are stuck in the elementary school, and we need to go to the bank and maybe, you know, wherever. Um, but I guess in some lab we don't have word of mouth for that. But I'll create a dad's I don't know who is going to send home twenty twenty one. It was one of the one of the emails. Chris, I'm with you. I am with you a hundred percent. I'm I'm just that's what people are used to, and I was literally. I mean, I didn't do that for the suburban football league, and like parents thought that I was the craziest person ever for number one, it wasn't allowed to send anything in the backpacks because of the pandemic, but just people in the, I mean, they're old school. They like, they like the physical paper. I don't know what it is. Um, are there any, Shelly, are there any, or, or, or Justin, this is unknown. Are there any parents that do not have connectivity to the bank? like online like internet no no i i i, I hope they all do <laughs> i haven't heard of any i think honestly that email blast is what kind of gets everybody's attention but i'm i'm pretty sure that i've seen you know the school prints out the things too and make sure they send them home with the kids so i don't know right well we can do that as a you know, we can't do that until the kids are in school anyway. But I know that when they put stuff in my kids' backpacks, we find them two months later underneath the rotten orange boxes. So, um, <laughs> I'll create a flyer and, and it can, I assume that we have the, the town registration page on the flyer for baseball, didn't we, Shelly? We sure did. Yep. And John, do we have a Waitley Rec Facebook page? Yeah. We do. Do you need rights to post on that? I think I can give you them, but I don't know your. Can you email me your Facebook? Yep. Yep. And I think even just like grassroots, if you can, you know, everybody post on their individual Facebook page or just email the flyer to any parents you think would be interested. We don't allow comments on the Facebook page. We just allow information. Because... Yeah, but what I'm saying is, it okay if, like, I posted the the soccer registration on my own personal page? Of course it is. Yeah, just to spread the word. Yeah, of course it is. But but again, I'm going to make you an admin for the Wavy Rec Facebook page, and you can post it there as well. Perfect. Yeah. Um, we can even get into 
Before we get up about breaking in and placing the bond down there early, where's the control going to be stored? The floorboard is even on that. So if it has to walk off, that should be stored in the shed. Yeah. And who's going to have access to it? And I'm sure that's a huge cost. If that's yeah. something, or, or who's liable if something happens or something gets mishandled, misplaced, walks off, who knows what can happen these days. This is my ex. I, I mean, I. I just, just, I just wanted to bring that up. Well, for, 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 for baseball, I'll think about kids breaking in. Let's say, let's say Justin becomes a baseball coach when his kids. Actually, your kids are in elementary school. Let's say Justin's a baseball coach next year. Justin would get the access code to the shed because he needs that anyway to get the line so he can line the the base paths. When he's in there, he can get the he can get the the, the control. The, yeah, okay. the the trick is to make sure that not everyone in the world knows. The and we need to change that because right now everyone knows the code. Probably wait, is it code? Yeah. We're being recorded. <laughs> well, maybe that's something to switch. Like, Stop your code. Yeah. <laughs> you just like maybe that's something we just like. We switch it, you know. Yeah, we should. Well, we should. I, I wouldn't know how to do that, but I hear it's easy. Yeah, I'm just thinking about it. to make sure we preserve all this stuff because they're expensive items, right? Right, and yeah, and we may need to construct shelving. There's a there's a in, if you go to the back of the shed, there's a the equivalent of a kitchen cabinet, you know, two doors sort of. And back when I was doing a lot of stuff, baseballs were stored there and stuff like that, just boxes of baseballs. But you could store them in there. I don't think you want to lock that because that's just another key that people have to know where it is. And you could lock. Okay. Um, so for the soccer registrations, what like what is that info, like the current thing that we use? Like how do I kind of like get the when I send it to Shelly, I'll send it to you. Okay. But 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 Shelly, don't you? Well, I, I mean, I, Chris, you should get used to, to, to doing this stuff. I'll send it to you, and you can send it to Mary Lesensky. Okay. Um, I don't know whether I have Mary's email anymore, but I'll 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 send you both an email, and, and Shelly, you can walk Chris through reaching out to Shelly. To Mary. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I can do that. Okay. Uh, uh, recruiting players and coaches. We have like a list of coaches from last year. Um, COVID. Okay, so kind of a fresh start then with that. Yeah, I mean, Justin and I, <laughs> it's usually the same volunteers every season. <laughs> uh, the twins are, Justin, what are they going into second or third? Third, right? You're, mute. You're muted, but I, th I think the twins are third grade. Yes, yes, they are, sir. <laughs> I mean, Christine is like the most popular youth sports coach that's ever been invented in Maine. So, uh, and she's great. So, you know, you've got a three four. The trick is if you have more than one team. Which at three four because you're playing seven v seven two teams. Um, actually, I, I don't know what that, what what how big are the third and fourth grades this year. So I know the the fourth graders. So my daughter's in in fourth. They'll have a few kids that will play. I'm, I'm not too familiar with the third graders, but again, that's Kristen's or Christina's boys group so they should have a really good turnout uh fifth and fifth and sixth i'm not sure it's fifth and sixth the boys always have the top seven and a lot of the boys in fifth and sixth play football i know my son and a lot of the, the boys play football right and because our population is so large we can have some of the sports that they play um, so 
First and second, they use the small diamond, and we should be using the new, well, depending upon what the outward brass is, that's the first one. Um, <laughs> 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 um, but what they did for first and second grade is you have your two big goal posts, and then you have smaller goal posts where you put it in the midfield line back to back. So you essentially have two half field games going on simultaneously with your 4v4 with a quasi goalie, but you're really not going to have that. Is there um, anything left in first and second? The pre KK have drills, but they don't typically play drills. Okay. They could if you want to organize stuff in other towns, but it's not something that is part of a schedule that was put out yeah. for the day. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's a very popular skill development game. Pylon is now on the field. And we'll play, we'll play early because the softball is on the plan. So we'll play again. Well, you could. The way the softball game was designed was, and then we, we, we made the softball, the, the soccer field used to go directly. line with the parking lot. So we just sort of continue and it would go towards the the, the farm field. Okay. But the way the outfield was designed and we put pins down to show where the end markers are, the mid markers and where the I think where the goals are supposed to go. So it should still be there. Um, you can the softball or I'm sorry the soccer field should that the plan was to use that as the as the center point moving forward, as long as it doesn't cause traffic to come to that. But that means that Chris and Kurt can go on with bathroom access and all that kind of stuff. I think that helps out a lot. I do it anyway. If you need to go on the extra property to get to the field. Um, and I don't know how that worked. They did that two years ago. It worked pretty well. I don't, you know. Um, but again, the, the the goal was to use the outfield, but again, if the outfield's in bad shape, I don't, we don't want to put more grass on the grass. So we had to get the Yeah, and she'll probably use the same policy that she used two years ago. She may say, hey, we can use the bathroom for the one bar. I think it would bring up the bathroom with her if she called it. So be an offer, I think she'll call that. Be valid, be valid as well. Do the thing with the games, but you know, turn two of those in, turn two of those in. That's, that's the, the, the difference. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that sort of, it seems like what, what you do is you don't open up the school, you open up the, the hallway to the kindergarten. So you have the left and the right and the bathroom. Apparently right there, I'm not sure. It's been a long time. And does any of the coach would open up the school or is the custodian actually have to get involved? It, well it's it's all by it's all by code, yeah. All, yeah. Yep. Well it's actually it's a um is it Bob now? It's a Bob okay. now. Um that would be up to her in terms of Bob distribution. Before we just had the code. Um, and they change the code once in a while, and then you have to tell coaches. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with Bob's. Okay. So, but that should be, if we do use the elementary school, it should be the same policy for pre K through four. Five, six will not use it. Five, six will use the big field at early, and they get exhausted because that's a ginormous field for a 12 year old. So, and you're also running uphill. I know where you go. Exactly. <laughs> Anything else? Just and there's nothing that you guys have heard as far as mask mandates. We're anticipating that it is a mask-free. Okay, yeah, 
And like the CDC, just announced that they recommend it. Sounds like it's going that way. Don't get me going. If it were up to me, it would be mandatory that people got the stupid vaccine, regardless of who you are or what you think. Because, well, I won't go. But as far as any, I mean, I have not heard. Okay. I've not heard. We're in a state that has 70% vaccination. Yeah. So that, you know, I think the CDC guideline was largely for states like Missouri and Mississippi and Alabama to have like 30% vaccination. Um, because that's where you see the, all those cases are going up here too. Not as dramatically. Okay. But hey, that might be a question for Chrissy as well. What do you hear? What's that policy going to be? I mean, I am, and if, if the opinion is is asked, I am all for our kids being mask free while playing soccer outdoors. <laughs> it was, it's all a visual thing anyway. You know, you see so many people learning on their chin because that works really well for them. Um, but I have not heard anything, but I, I love to, to hear. I'm sure that that guidance will be starting to come out in the next couple of weeks as they approach the start of school. So, yeah, that's all I got. All right. So, we'll just uh, we'll keep in touch. Was there any, are we going to have a regular scheduled meeting or you want to do ad hoc like, because I'm all for ad hoc personally. For the next meeting. Oh, when, when do we want to do that? I, I, I don't know. Do Wednesdays work for people? I like, typically have select board or I really just have a select board. Okay. But, you know, don't do it around my schedule. Is it more convenient for people if, like, well, what did I say it out loud? I kind of feel dumb, but is it more convenient to, like, okay, on the 28th of, or the fourth Wednesday of every month, we're going to have a meeting, or every 27th, or, you know, or is it like, hey, we need to have one this month, like, Hey Wayne, when are you available? Kind of thing. I'm like, okay, this works. Let's pick a date. What do we think? Option B. I'm, I'm good with I'm I'm good with option B too. Yeah. All right, and that's how we're going to make the meeting But Wayne and I are working on the ball field. We're gonna check out the ball field. See what kind of that status is. And I'll keep you know keep in touch about okay. yeah. Me and John will be on that. That meeting, I mean, Brian emailed me today asking me if I wanted to be part of the next week. Um, that meeting should happen pretty soon because they got to make a decision. Okay. And John, I'll keep eyes peeled for the um, the soccer flyer, and then Chris, I'll, I'll reach out on a on a one off with you, and we'll we'll proceed with that. Shelly, I've got to go. Home. I'm on a, I'm on a big work deadline for tonight, so I'm not sure I'll get it to you tonight, but I'll get it to you. Oh my gosh! I'm yeah. Within the next week and a half, two weeks is fine. Not. So I'll, I'll try to get it done tomorrow, but it won't. It won't happen tonight. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night, guys. See you guys. All right. All right.